the uh, so the general theme is um, you know emergence of uh, space time from field theories and um, so the particular example that I'll talk about is the uh, emergence or some hint at emergence of uh, so. Emergence of N ADS2 from N CFT. So this N is near. Okay, so which means that there's a slightly broken ADS2 uh, from slightly broken CFT1. So it's not like we will have a very uh, concrete proposal and we'll have worked out something, but we'll give you some ideas. And of course, before that, I'll, I'll sort of uh, say what is uh, known or what I know of what is known. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> um, so let me first, uh, 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 let me first give you the general uh, theme in case I get lost in the detail later on. So there are some examples, so there are lots, of course, lots of examples now of, uh, you know, a possible emergence of space-time from uh, field theories. So one of the, probably the oldest example is the appearance of two-dimensional space-time from C equal to one matrix model. Uh, and then, uh, there is a BFSS matrix theory, uh, which uh, you know was equivalent to um, some eleven-dimensional space-time theory, and of course ADS-CFT. The various examples of ADS-CFT. Um, <clears throat> so there have been many attempts at understanding, um, and and there have been many more, like you know the trying to construct a holographic direction. From Wilsonian renormalization uh, group, and uh, recently there is this uh, large, large flurry of activity on uh, space time from information metric and, and, and so on. Um, so what the theme that I'm going to um, uh, talk about here is the um, idea that if you know the symmetry group which acts on the configuration space of the field theory, then you may be able to, um, you know, write down some action uh, just on, from the knowledge of that symmetry group. Uh, so this is a method called the coadjoint orbit method, and uh, it has helped us, uh, you know, in the context of the C equal to one matrix model to find the two-dimensional space-time theory. And, um, uh, there are also other examples, some uh, small examples of within ADS-CFT, where uh, if you consider this LLM geometries, which appear in the context of giant gravitons, then you can identify the some action, coadjoint orbit action in the space of LLM geometries, and that turns out bang on, on the um, action for, uh, of the graviton. Sorry, giant gravitons. So the <clears throat> so the, these these things are uh, possible. So the, we'll see that in the context of uh, some uh, you know condensed matter model, statistical mechanics model called the SYK model, such that Yi and Kitai, uh, there the um, low energy action of the um, SYK model near the infrared uh, fixed point, um, not at the infrared fixed point, that's the, that's the important distinction. Near the infrared fixed point, it uh, has some structure like a coadjoint orbit action. Okay, it's called the Schwarzian action, and uh, it has been noticed before um, by um, Witten and Polyakov and so on that the Schwarzian action uh, actually arises uh, from a coadjoint orbit uh, uh, construction of uh, reparameterization group diff group uh, 
on the uh, quadrant orbit uh, action on the diff manifold. Okay, so that's this sort of uh, thing. So I'll I'll point out where uh, where these things appear. So let me now uh, sort of uh, and the idea would be. Uh, to see uh, whether we can repeat some of the things that we did earlier in the context of C equal to 1 and so on. Okay, so let me first describe very briefly the SYK model. So, um, Sachdev and Yi's uh, papers you can read, uh, they are available in the literature. But if you want to see Kitaev's contribution, the only source is a couple of talks, uh, long talks. So if you want, don't want to do that, you better read Malasena's, uh, you know, um, paper on the SYK model, which is what I did. So let me describe uh, my introduction to Malasena's introduction to SYK model. So here it is. So the it has the dynamical degrees of freedom are is quantum mechanics. So there are um, quantum n um, Majorana fermions, quantum mechanical uh, Majorana particles, and uh, Everybody see from the back. <clears throat> um, so this is time, and the Hamiltonian is given by uh, a random coupling which couples which couples Q fermions. So, you know, uh, you can think of Q equal to 4, in which case it will be a quartic uh, model. And uh, all of these I1, I2, et cetera, et cetera, they are in this range, except that uh, you can't, um, okay, so this is how it is. That's the range. Um, of course, these are Majorana, so you have to have these um, indices distinct. And the thing is that these uh, uh, couplings, they are random, so they are taken from a distribution such that they are given by <coughs> the main important thing is that they have a certain n dependence of this sort, but they also have some additional q dependence like that. It's some combinatoric factor. So the main thing that I would uh, um, ask you to look at is this n dependence of this, uh, this factor. In general, you can also have various different kind of, uh, but you can have a monomial as well. So, logs, yeah, this, this is the quench uh, sense. Um, all right, so, um, you know, the way uh, you can uh, do this is, um, so, by the way, this Q is some, um, this Q is some even number. This Q is some even number. Q is um, okay, so I'm not going to go to great details of this, but let me just tell you roughly how this uh, model is solved. Um, So what you do is, uh, so you have a partition function in which you have that action over here. 
to this you introduce the following i mean basically what you want to do is to insert a fermion bilinear as um as an auxiliary field much like what you do for hubbard stratification transformation except you, here you do do it through a delta function so this is what you do <coughs> This is what you want to insert with a delta function. So this is like a bilocal meson variable. And um, of course, um, this delta function, you know, you don't know how to handle that uh, very nicely. So what you do is uh, put this with a Lagrange multiplier, which is also local so you have now two additional degrees of freedom sigma and j and uh, and in this s now what happens is that uh, you have of course the kinetic term and uh, you have these these guys which basically becomes some uh, to the power, uh, so there is this uh, this term which um, you keep as psi psi, and uh, and you have here basically sigma, uh, and yeah. So this this term here basically gets written in terms of the g variable. g to the power, so there is a sigma psi psi and then there is a sigma so there is a sigma g here and from the action you had a, I am writing something wrong here, <clears throat> there is a sigma psi psi. This is sigma g to the power g. The sigma g. Well, I don't know whether I should really go into the great. Uh, so I can integrate out this size. Okay. Ah. So. Let, let, let me tell you, yeah, so let me tell you how there is, there is a, there is a re-summation involved in, uh, so you do the, so you write down the Schrodinger, um, Schrodinger Dyson equation, the way I understand is that you write down the Schrodinger, Schrodinger Dyson equation and then on the correlation functions, so this is what you do. Let's say you have Q equal to 4 okay, and you look at the Green's function. So the first one is just uh, the, um, uh, the first one is just uh, free propagation and then you have this J here and then you have these guys like that and then so these are you know this is some color running uh, this way and this fellow is a multicolored object, so there is some I coming in. And I J K L. So this is a okay, so I J K L is a four line object, and then you at the level of the correlation function, uh, you um, do the averaging, okay. and what you get is that. You get JL, JL averaging here as in this and you will find that there is a factor of N, to the N cubed appearing here because of the color, free color uh, flowing here 
and you get j square over n cube and so and Um, yeah, well, let's see. Yes. That's what I do, that's what I do. Uh, so this is probably being, uh, you know, said with several uh, steps uh, missing. So what I'm trying to say is that, you know, if you, if you think of this as some kind of a uh, fat propagator, then this is equal to this, and you can look at what this object is. This object, so here you have some uh, i omega, okay, and this is some z, z of omega, where z of omega it has basically uh, three propagators in it, okay. So this like j square g cube, okay. Is this uh, equation clear that the full propagator is given by minus i omega plus, uh, this is the free propagator and this is the uh, self energy the fat lines are this, uh, uh, this fermion propagators. These are, these are, these are fat. Yes, 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 of course. There is a, there is a large n approximation here. There is a, there is an n that uh, comes in. This is for G, uh, that's right, this is for Yeah. Um, if you draw more, uh, you know, yeah, so, yes. Yeah, that's what you do. Um, what, where exactly it makes a difference, um, you know, compared to J being a dynamical field, that I don't see here. But um, this is what this is what you, you indeed do. I mean, you write this guy with these J's as external uh, fields, and after you have done the correlators, okay, there were there were diagrams where there is a difference. But uh, you know, I, I don't rec I recall that uh, diagram. Yes, not the partition function, uh, on log z. That's what at least the Kitaev model says. In Malasena's paper, uh, you know, I haven't quite seen uh, this quenched thing. Yeah, there, there are diagrams where you, you see the difference, but uh, in what I have said so far, it, it seems that, you know, J might as well be a, dynamical field just like anything else, but there are diagrams in which there is visible difference. I... Uh -huh. Yeah. Right. I mean, this is also what is done for this impurity models in which the J's are, um, yeah. 
I, I think the answer to your uh, question is that it is log z over which you have to do the randomization. But um, yeah. So. Sigma here is just the Lagrange multiplier field, and G is the bilocal meson. Okay, and um, yeah. Um, sorry, I forgot. J square times. J square times. J square times. Yeah. So let me write down what the. Uh, after you integrate out this uh, uh, fermions, this is what you get. What you get is that uh, well, S is trace log and there's a, there is, so N comes out of this, that is why there's a saddle point involved and here you have del t minus sigma and minus sigma t t prime g t t prime minus j square by q and g t t prime whole to the power q um, sum over t t prime, integral over t t prime. This is what the effective action is. Um, so indeed, there is some, some stuff that is done here about, you know, summing over, uh, integrating over this j's, okay, it's, and going back to this partition function uh, at the level of z, z, okay, which is a little miraculous, okay. So I can only understand diagram by diagram, but what exactly is being done here so that I, I get back z rather than log z and this way, that I don't really understand. I, I uh, say that, but uh, that's the claim that this is the quench model corresponds to this. Okay, so now if you look at the equation of motion of this, uh, uh, this is what the equation of motion are. So the, <coughs> uh, basically, it's the same thing as you would have gotten from the diagrams. Ah, maybe, maybe. That's right, that's right. So, the, 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 uh, maybe. You mean fermions coming from out of there? The whole thing is a J propagator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like these. Like that. Ah, uh -huh. yeah, these. Yeah, self energy yeah. correction of J's. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's not there. That's not there. That's not there. Reason. Yeah, maybe that's the, the re reason is quenching. Yeah. Uh, uh, so what they are saying is that at large n with quenching, this this is this sigma is all that you you should uh, talk about. Where inside this sigma, these are the fat propagators. Ah. saying that this, this diagram would uh, 
uh, blow up in n counting? Because, because hmm. because it's just too many. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. I think that's probably the case. And here there's some clever resummation is being done after all this. But basically, this equation, if I write down, then you will all agree with this. So this is E T prime. Q minus 1. Q minus 1 because if it is a quartic uh, coupling, then there will be three propagators in the middle. So this, these are the equations. So you can see this in diagrammatics. You can see this uh, in a Schwinger Dyson uh, series. So now let us look at um, what's happening to, so of course there is a, uh, you know, trivial theory uh, at UV which is zero coupling. But let us look at the IR uh, limit, okay. So see here that J has dimension of mass, okay. So this is the one dimension, remember, so size all have zero, dimension zero. So at, uh, this is the UV counting I'm talking about. And now the, uh, therefore, this, all this size have dimension zero. So therefore, this little J must have dimension um, of uh, one mass dimension 1, so therefore this capital J also should have mass dimension 1. So IR limit should mean that I should look at this limit. Okay, so in this limit, you can ignore this term, okay. So what you have is this is equal to this one and sigma equal to, so let me write, write it down in a way that makes this conformal invariance. Um, so what you get is that this, this, this term is gone and what you get is this. Is this how much is remaining or how much? How much is remaining? Jesus Christ. Okay, this is what it is and uh, the other equation is this one. Okay, now let me say without any um, proof that uh, if you make um, a transformation of G uh, and uh, sigma, um, with reparameterization, uh, so this, these two equations are reparameterization invariant in one dimension, okay, where G should be thought of as a tensor of the kind dt1 over q, dt prime 1 over q, and this guy should be thought of as a tensor of the kind 1 minus 1 over q and dt1 minus 1 over q, okay. So you just uh, assume that these are tensors of that kind and uh, so this is sometimes written as delta. <coughs> delta 1 minus delta. This delta is going to be the anomalous dimension of this uh, fermion uh, thing. So g basically has a scaling dimension of twice delta. Uh, I mean length dimension of twice delta, so psi uh, has mm, dimension of delta as you can see from the following. Uh, so, so these things you can solve, okay, these you can solve. So I'll write down here the <coughs> solution. Mm. Uh, by the way, so, uh, the, uh, so all these solutions will be translationally invariant. So I can write g t t prime as essentially g t minus, I mean t comma zero. So this is t comma zero, so that's g of t. And this is going to be, this is the UV propagator was just a sign of t. That's what happens is the uh, inverse of derivative uh, one del t. And uh, here you get some b and t to the power two delta. 
So this is something that happens when the time uh, is, everything is Euclidean here, time is Euclidean. If time is compact, that's uh, finite temperature. I'm not going to write uh, that thing down, but this is what you get, where delta is this. So this is the fermion propagator at strong coupling, okay? And where B behaves like this, J to the power minus two over Q. So you can see that, um, you know, in the limit of uh, J going to infinity, B goes to zero, okay? So the propagator vanishes. In fact, what uh, uh, you can see is that, um, okay, so let me, let me make some, uh, let me, let me make some points here is that there is reparameterization invariance in the equations of motion, okay? This solution, you can check, it uh, breaks all of reparameterization invariance except for an SL2R, okay? If you apply the tensor transformation property of the Gs and apply the solution, you can see that this is, uh, this preserves some SL2R, but the rest of the diffeomorphism, it, uh, um, breaks. So you have some Goldstone uh, modes which uh, are characterized by diff R1 by S1. So what you can do, um, okay, so that, that's point number one. And point number two is that the Green's function vanishes in the J going to infinity direction. Okay. Um, you can do something uh, with this observation, which is uh, important, and we are going to use that um, to our... Uh, um, this one? Yeah, what happens is that... Um, so let, let me go to the next point, and then it, then it will be clear. Um, so let's say that, you know, what is the, from this observation, so this, these are the Goldstone modes. Can you really find out the Goldstone action? Okay. So the way you do that, to say that, let us say my, I'll think of the G as my, uh, uh, G as my, so I'll, I'll characterize all the solutions uh, as small fluctuations over the, over any one of the solutions, okay. Let's say this is my solution, classical solution, GC. So G will be GC plus some delta epsilon of G, okay, where delta epsilon of G is parameterized according to some diff transformation, according to some reparameterization transformation. And, uh, and these are given by the usual tensor transformation uh, of a tensor which is of this kind, okay? So, for instance, this guy will be the, you know, delta epsilon uh, at T plus epsilon prime. Uh, so this, if this is T prime, and this T prime, and plus uh, epsilon delta T. Delta T prime of GTT. Okay. So these are the small fluctuations around this solution. And you simply plug it in here. You plug it in here without this term. And uh, so, um, exactly. So the point is that in, in one dimension, uh, reparameterization, conformal transformation, and while uh, transformation, they are all exactly the same. So this is what you would indeed expect that, um, you know, the, these, are, these, are not, um, these are not distinct 
And what you find is that the, um, I mean, you, you get the following, you get the following, um, you get the following, um, the uh, quadratic fluctuation equation, okay? Ah, was that was that what you were? Uh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Sorry, 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 sorry. So let me say it again. Let me say it. The IR, the IR gap equation. Yeah, so I, I, I'm saying things uh, perhaps too uh, quickly. So the this term, okay, did not allow uh, the reparameterization uh, symmetry. When I uh, ignore this fellow, then this and this together, they have reparameterization now, okay? So it's a property of the J equal to infinity uh, equation of motion, but the solution spontaneously breaks, okay, the, um, the, uh, uh, everything, all of uh, the deep parameter symmetry except SL2. Okay, so therefore it's really like a Goldstone, um, you know, mode in which the uh, Goldstones are parameterizing um, D phase one uh, mode S1. But you might ask the question, okay, what is the Goldstone action? Okay, so let me tell you what the Goldstone action is. It is given by this. So now here I'm writing this for Okay, this is the Goldstone action, which is written written entirely in terms of the geometric variable, okay, epsilon. Okay, this is what is uh, you know exciting to us because it is exactly this kind of thing that happens. So this is the quadratic this is the quadratic fluctuation equation and interestingly what appears here is 1 over j, okay? So it's the same inverse power of j that appeared also in the, in the uh, Green's function, okay? This, there, I can, yes, 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 I can do that. This, this stuff remains as 1 over j. So precisely in the j equal to infinity limit, okay? this action actually becomes trivial, okay? So this, I can promote that as Shia says, so this becomes one over J, uh, like that, where this is the Schwarzian derivative. Um, and uh, okay, so this this is the you know uh, what comes out of this YK model. There are many things that we, one can say about that, uh, but the picture, yeah. How I got that is is that I have this uh, characterizer of the uh, fluctuation. So you know it's really like the uh, yeah, it's like. Oh, oh, well, no, no, there are derivatives and stuff that, uh, you know, uh, you really have to, so the, all information about the solution here, okay, about what GC of T was, it provides some additional derivatives, and uh, because of this, okay, and it uh, gives you the central, uh, it gives you the uh, overall action of this, uh, of this Schwarzian derivative. Is that what you, how you are saying, how do, how do you get this? Yeah, you, you do, I mean, it's, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a mess, but you, you do get that, okay? I mean, you, you have to, yeah, you have to plug that in. It's, it's, it's quite a bit of work. Okay, 
So you, you get that and uh, then you, uh, so this is what uh, the story is that you have some UV theory. Precisely at IRJ equal to infinity, the theory is trivial. So you have to stop somewhere, okay, some large J in order to have an approximate uh, reparametrization invariance. Still, reparametrization invariance as, and as I said and conformal invariance, they are the same things in, in, in one dimension and you have to stop at some large value of J but not quite, let's say some J equal to J naught. Trivial means that the fermion Green's function actually vanishes. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's not a, yeah. The, the fermion Green's function can be uh, handled by um, uh, wave function renormalization. Yeah, but the this effective action, okay, the this is the correct statement. This effective action of the fluctuations, which can be even uh, taken to arbitrary order like this, that uh, vanishes. Yeah. Yeah, but here I have written only some up to quadratic uh, terms anyway. There are other terms which all uh, come in here. Ha uh ha. -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, I see. So you're saying that, uh, you know, let's uh, redefine epsilon over square root of j as uh, that and. Right, right, right. Right, okay, good. So that's what it is and then the point is that, uh, but this is not what was supposed to happen uh, because we were supposed to get uh, a strongly coupled uh, IR field theory and uh, so what the, the, uh, the question is what uh, in a possible, Yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, the zero temperature limit has not been uh, written here, so. Yeah, this does not have any beta, so therefore you can, you can take it to zero to infinity. Okay, so um, so that's that's the story. That in order to get a non-trivial theory, you have to uh, be somewhat away from this. And uh, the what we are looking for is some some UV theory in it's a bulk dual. So the bulk dual is something that. Uh, so, for example, you can keep in mind the ADS4 going to ADS2 cross R2, this model of, um, or, or any other, uh, any other model, okay, where, um, uh, you know, the simplest description of such a, so, the, you know, you can think of maybe this is the kind of model that <clears throat> will uh, give you, but you're not interested in what's, where it's coming from. You're not interested in what, where it's coming from. So, you are interested only in the minimal description of uh, ADS2, but slightly away from ADS2. So, I should say here that we are talking about two different uh, kind of breaking. One is a spontaneous breaking of uh, the, this diff uh, symmetry and another is the explicit breaking of the diff uh, symmetry because we are away from uh, the, 
maximal is strongly coupled linear. So here we will do the same thing. So first, ah, my time is uh, actually up. So let me let me tell you uh, very briefly what is um, actually done. So what Malasena does, Malasena and company do, do the following. Suppose that you take pure gravity in ADS2, okay, then uh, this is exact ADS2. Uh, no, no, it's a... Uh, You know, here, um, no, you take this. You take this as the, as the theory so that the uh, higher order terms remain. Because you know you you are so there is no there is no scaled variable that you can take here so that j is uh, you know so what, you, suppose you take the j equal to infinity limit okay in order to describe the j equal to infinity limit you need a scaled variable okay. uh, which which remains non-zero. No, no, this is not explicit, well, in the, in the sense that, you know, if I would write to, like to write the theory where J does not appear at all. See, that I'm not able to do, right? If, um, okay, so you're saying that, um, So in the in this in this model, okay, it's, uh, you know something that uh, I didn't have time to uh, go into. Um, yeah, let, 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 let me let me complete what what is the story with the bulk. So in the bulk, if you if you take this. Uh, that, of course, we know is a topological term. So, what? Uh, so, let, let's let's suppose we try this, okay? Uh, which is just uh, now this uh, theory, okay? Let's say with some. This theory. Uh, of course, has ADS2 as a solution um, in it, and you cut it off, okay, by some, uh, so you use this. You cut it off by some, uh, with some prescription about the proper, uh, you know, uh, length of this, uh, remaining as uh, fixed to be something like one over epsilon. And uh, you work out, you know, what the, uh, the action, okay. Uh, now the action uh, will have non-trivial contributions only because of the boundary term, okay. 
And this boundary term, it turns out to be, you know, the Schwarzian of, uh, so when you evaluate this, this turns out to be the Schwarzian of, uh, Schwarzian of, uh, e. okay. it gets contribution entirely from the boundary term. And this guy, subject to this proper length, uh, 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 constraint, it actually becomes a total derivative. Okay. So all of this, I'm, I, I, I was not able to uh, tell you at the moment, but uh, so the rigid circle is given by t equal to u, and this is some delta t of alpha u, let's say. And to the linear order, you can see that it's just given by, um, so in this, the, the remark that Rajesh made, uh, you know, comes into play that in this uh, theory, the um, going from one shape of the curve to another shape of the curve is an exact symmetry, okay? You can go from one to the other by making a reparametrization uh, inside and that just uh, takes one wiggle from another wiggle and therefore it's an exact zero mode and as a result, you would have thought that you get a Schwarzian action here, but that Schwarzian action actually turns out to be a total uh, derivative, okay? So in order to remedy that, what they do is to say that, well, <coughs> this theory perhaps describes this point, but, you know, there is some other stuff that's coming in from here, perhaps, um, you know, a dilaton, okay? So if you put a dilaton here, then, there is a total derivative that's coming from this piece, but there is another field here. So, which basically means that there is an arbitrary shape, uh, there is an arbitrary profile of the dilaton that's already here. And then you also have arbitrary wiggle, namely this T of U. You can't fix both at the same time. So, as a result, there is a non, uh, you know, non-trivially uh, non-zero difference between these uh, actions. And that action, when you uh, compute that, it just gives you uh, something like this. I mean, you can, you can identify this with uh, uh, that. I mean, this identification is not done. Like, what they get here is basically some value of this uh, dilaton, which you can take to be a constant at a certain gauge, which comes out, okay? So the value of the dilaton, that breaks the reparametration symmetry, it comes out and the idea is to identify that with 1 over j. Okay, so there is, there is a boundary value of the dilaton which is taken to be constant and then there is a j which is, uh, so the dilaton breaks the reparametration symmetry of the ADS2 and uh, uh, same with this uh, j here. Um, right. Okay. So anyway, that's 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 their uh, uh, model. So what we propose here, and we have some justification from that uh, for, from coadjoint orbit uh, uh, methods, which is that it's we don't take this uh, theory, but we take the Liouville theory. We take this, and you have. You have a boundary action for the Liouville theory, which uh, is known uh, from the 90s. And uh, so if you apply this logic of, uh, you know, so in case of the Liouville theory, it's not a topological theory, okay? That R guy was a topological, R root G was a topological theory. Liouville theory is not topological. So you can explicitly compute, you know, the uh, difference of the, action of these uh, curves and they, they cost, uh, you know, energy and you can uh, find out what, uh, and, and the situation is pretty much the same. It is like this, except that it's, if you go to the conformal gauge, okay, that like this, then it is the sigma that appears here. Once again, you can't wish away 
uh, this sigma, it, it's non-trivially there, and therefore there's a non-trivial um, value of the um, action. And you can go to a certain gauge in which sigma is constant, then it comes out, and then it's a sigma that uh, can be identified with this 1 over g. And the additional benefit that you can get from here is that we can get this uh, Liouville action, okay? So there's a famous work by Witten and uh, Alex Shiv and uh, Shatashvili and Polyakov uh, who derive this action from the coadjoint orbit uh, method, okay? So that sort of uh, uh, completes the circle of arguments somehow. There are lots of things that, you know, I don't understand uh, in, in this stuff. And uh, in particular, you know, I have to still um, have a uh, you know, good answer to Shiraz's question, whether I can absorb this whole thing by wave function renormalization and, uh, or not. But the point uh, is made several times over in both the bulk discussion and in the, uh, in the, uh, uh, in, in, in the field theory discussion is that the, this field theory is, is trivial um, and, uh, but at, at least this much is clear that from this analysis as well, you can, you can show that the, whatever coefficient comes out, that coefficient is small by some uh, standard analysis. Okay, I have taken, uh, you know, 300 minutes more than 